So it is it pervades everywhere. So the unit is limited in size, the space is unlimited. Okay. It is all pervading. <coughs> If you look at the unit, it is an activity. If you look at the space, it is no activity. I think I can also write the fully equivalent of it. I mean, you don't worry, if you know Hindi and you can read it, it is fine, otherwise forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> and doing it with a very specific purpose. <clears throat> Limited in size, it's called Simit Akar. Akar Simit. This is Asimit. Last thing, and this is called Vyapak. All per wedding is Vyapak. Something which pervades everywhere, right? that is Vyapak. <coughs> this unit is Kriyasi, is an activity. This is Kriya Suni. So Kriya Suni, therefore it is also called Suni. what we are calling as Kriya Sunni. So it is not any Kriya, it is not an activity. <coughs> so this Kriya Sunni, it is called Sunni. So Sunni is in this sense that it is there but it is not an activity. So this is a reality which is not an activity. Unit is also a reality which is an activity. Now if you have to understand the whole existence, you have to understand this space, which is a reality, and you have to understand the units, which is also reality. This space is no activity, whereas the units are activity. Till now what we were doing, we are trying to you know, identify these activity, these units, right? as the material unit, as the consciousness unit. right? So we qualify that the material units have the activity of recognizing and fulfilling, the consciousness activity, the consciousness units have the activity of knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. <coughs> then we talked about this activity of all these four orders, you know, units in these four orders. So all these are activities. But when we talk about this space, it is no activity. <coughs> so this is one observation about the units and the space. 
and you can see that there is a coexistence right, between the unit and the space because the units are always in space. Now, if you look at it further, and which is very important to see. The unit is energized in space, right? For example, where is the earth? It's in space, right? It is energized in space. It is an activity in space. Then, the earth is self-organized in space. <coughs> and it is recognizing its relationship. These three things are happening, and if you don't, and, and you don't have to do anything for it. Let me explain what it means. The earth is in space. The earth is energized in space. It is an activity in space. So you can see the earth is rotating around its sun, around its active axis. It is rotating around the sun, right? So it is all an activity, right? Now, who is supplying the energy? You are supplying energy, or it is energized in space, right? So this is one thing. Now you say that the energy of the earth is coming from the sun. This is also believed in this so-called modern science. But if you ask where is the energy of sun coming from, so they will say it is coming out of the fission reaction. So the hydrogen atoms are fusing together to make helium atom. Right? That is how the energy of the sun is coming. Now if you ask where is the energy of hydrogen atom coming? Then they will stop. <laughs> <laughs> this hydrogen atom is energized in this place. Don't ask for the question. So the hydrogen atom there is there, it is energized in space. The helium atoms are there, they are energized in space. Right? When these hydrogen atoms you know, fuse together to make helium atom, then a lot of you know, excitement is released. A lot of excited energy, you know, step is released. And we are tend to call this as energy. Because we think that if something normal is happening at a normal pace, then this is no energy. Right? Like you are thinking, this is energy, right? Or not? It is an activity, so it is energized. So your self is energized in space. That is how you are continuously thinking. Right? You don't think something is happening. When you start shouting, then you think something is happening. Mm -hmm. That's how we are used to think. So, the hydrogen atoms are energized in space, the helium atoms are energized in space. Right? The earth is energized in space, the sun is energized in space. So this is one thing that is happening. The second thing is that these units are self-organized in space. Earth, for example, is self-organized or you have to do something to organize it. 
The answer is in a definite order, right? Definite conduct. <coughs> that is how when the earth is definite, you know, is you know, self-organized, then so many things are taking place in it. Okay. A little disturbance in the self-organization of the earth may create havoc. And that is what we saw, right? That by our intervention, though we did nothing for the self-organization of this, this you know, earth, we are trying to disorganize it, right? So it is creating so much of problems. So the earth is self-organized in space, it is energized in space, and it is recognizing its relationship with sun and fulfilling that relationship by way of going around the sun. <coughs> now you can see whether all this is happening by way of coexistence or you have to do something for it. Automatically, happening. right? It is happening by way of coexistence, right? And when the earth is there and aside in space, self-organized in space, recognizing its relationship and fulfilling that relationship in space, then all this possibility of you know this physical order and the pranic order and the animal order and the human order is there, and that is how we are there, right? If this is not there, what will you do for yourself? Have we done anything for this to happen? It is there, right? And we don't need to do anything for this. We just have to understand this. Right? So if you look at the whole existence, right, the existence is in the form of coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space, right? And this is the meaning of submerged, right? When you say submerged, what it means is these three things, right? The unit is energized in space, it is self-organized in space, it is recognizing its relationship with other units in space and fulfilling it. And all this is happening. Right? You don't have to do anything for this to happen. Right? All that you need to do is to understand this coexistence. And when you understand this coexistence, okay, live in this coexistence. That is all. Nothing extra. Nothing very great. Right? This is the simple thing to do. The existence is already in the form of coexistence. Right? We don't have to do anything for it. We only have to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. So, <coughs> I will take a few more examples to demonstrate this idea. <coughs> for example, if you look at your body, This is such a huge, you know, kind of activity. It is constituted of innumerable number of atoms. Like you can't even count them. Right? All these atoms are in space. They are self-organized, energized in space. They are self-organized in space. They are recognizing their relationship with other atoms making molecules. These molecules are there, they are energized in space, they are self-organized in space, they are recognizing their relationship with other molecules and forming the molecular structure. Then the cells, then the parts of the body, then the body itself. Right? This is how this body is formed of innumerable number of atoms okay, in coexistence Okay, with each other, and you can see this huge, you know, constitution of the body is there. Such a big organization. 
Are you doing anything for it to be there? Nothing, right? It is so well organized. Okay? Think of it. Such a sophisticated you know, unit, such a sophisticated instrument. If you had to make this instrument, right, it is going to be extremely difficult. All these robots that we have been talking about these days, right? It is not one by thousand times, right? You know, of this body that we have. The fineness, the self-organization of the body is so, so, so fine, so sophisticated, right? No robot which has been, you know, made till today is even one by thousand times what facility we have in this body. <coughs> and have you done anything for this body to be there? Nurture. <laughs> Nurture, yes. Nurture when it is already there, right? <laughs> this self-organization is already there, okay? And then you are nurturing it. You are trying to identify what may suit, you know, this health of this body and you are trying to provide that food. But you are not doing anything for the self-organization of the body. It is there by way of coexistence. Similarly, now if you look at yourself, the self is, you know, energized in space. Okay. It is self-organized in space. It is there as a unit. It is recognizing its relationship with the body and fulfilling it. So what, what have you done for the self to be there? Nothing. Very good. So you have not done anything for the body to be there. You have not done anything for yourself to be there. And you have not done anything for the coexistence of the two to be there. Right? It is there. You are asking the body to sit down. It sits down. You want it to get up. It gets up. Right? So this coexistence is also there. You have done anything for it? No. Now just imagine. You have not done anything for your body to be there. You have not done anything for yourself to be there. You have not done anything for the coexistence of the two to be there. Right? This is all by way of coexistence. And this is the thing you are very great. <laughs> <laughs> you can do this, you can do that, right? <coughs> so, if you correctly understand this, what it turns out is that my very being, as a human being, is by way of this coexistence. Right? My body is by way of coexistence. Myself is by way of coexistence. Right? My coexistence of self and the body is by way of coexistence. That is what I am. Right? That is the way I am. And if I understand this properly, then I can understand that all that I need to do as a human being <coughs> is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. That is the total scope. Right. <coughs> the total scope for a human being to do is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. Some people are again taking off. <laughs> and you have critical feelings. <laughs> so I must make them up. I must make them up because this is very critical what we are talking about. <coughs> so let me repeat what I said. <laughs> I said that. Our body has a very complex structure, self-organization, which is there by way of coexistence. We have not done anything for the body to be there. Our self is also there by way of this coexistence. And the coexistence between the self and the body is also there by way of this coexistence. We have not done anything for it. So it is all a gift of this coexistence, right? If I, we understand this, if we realize this, then we can see that all that we can do 
Now, with this clarity, is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. That is all. Everything is by way of coexistence. You understand it, you know. All that you need to do is this. <laughs> understand this coexistence. Live in this coexistence. And you will see, when you understand this coexistence, it leads to happiness. When you live in this coexistence, it leads to happiness. Right? So, happiness, in fact, is an indicator of the fact that you have understood this coexistence and you are living in this coexistence. Contrary to this, unhappiness is an indicator of the fact that you have not understood this coexistence. Instead, we have assumed some contradiction, right? some opposition, and you are not living in coexistence. So, in fact, happiness and unhappiness is a built-in mechanism in this coexistence to make you realize this coexistence and live in this coexistence. Any deflection from this right, keeps you giving this indicator in terms of unhappiness that you are not going in the right direction. So right. the self you are referring here is uh, the self uh, which is the organized self, uh, which was uh, understood through natural acceptance and not yeah. the deluded self. Ultimately, it has to reach there. If it has not reached there and it is working only with this, it is stuck with the contradictions right? and therefore unhappiness. <coughs> <coughs> so now you can see what we as a human being need to do is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. What else is required? Right? If we do this, we are in a state of in a, in a state of happiness. If we don't do it, we think otherwise, <coughs> we are in a state of unhappiness. So your happiness and unhappiness is an indicator of the fact you know, whether you have understood this coexistence and living in this coexistence or you have not understood the coexistence and you are not living in coexistence. So this is the check and balance, okay, this happiness and unhappiness right, put on you by this coexistence right, which keeps indicating you whether you are going in the right direction or you are going in the wrong direction. If you look back with this background, right, what we have been saying right from the first day would now look very simple. Right. It says happiness is to be in harmony. That is to be in coexistence. You are already in coexistence. Now when you understand this coexistence and you live in this coexistence, that is happiness. Therefore, the program of action to ensure continuity of happiness is to understand the harmony and to live in harmony. So, if you have to put it in one word, to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence, right? which includes all of this. So, all these big things we have been talking about, right? Last six days. It has to be summed up. It is very simple. The existence is equal to coexistence. Right? As a human being, all that we need to do is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. Right? This leads to continuous happiness, right? living with continuous happiness. So that was the total story. Right? <coughs> so all this wrong story <laughs> we have been telling <coughs> for the last six days is very simple. So this story is, if I now write down, let me just write this down and then we'll come back. So if I have to just sum up you know, all these points, you know, what we have discussed in last seven days or last six days, <laughs> is simply this. So if I have to put this sum up here.
So this is all. So this is the essence of the long story <laughs> that we have been talking about. Okay, all these six days. So existence is called coexistence, and which is ever present. <coughs> All that I need to do is to understand this coexistence, and that's just in this harmony, and live in this harmony. This leads to happiness. This leads to continuous happiness. So this is all that we need to do. <coughs> Very simple, right? Yes. <laughs> One line. <coughs> Conclusion. And you can see, this is not something great that you need to do. Okay. You don't have to construct this existence. Right? It is already there. It is already in the form of coexistence. Right? So it is ever present. <coughs> so all that I need to do is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. If I do this, it is indicated in terms of my happiness. If I don't do this and start thinking otherwise, out of my preconditioning or out of the sensation, right, then it leads to a state of unhappiness, <coughs> which is an indicator and also a major, you know, means to control me from do, go, you know, going away from coexistence. So it is a self-control mechanism, this unhappiness and happiness. It is a self-control mechanism to make sure that you are in line with this coexistence. So that is all it is. So this is the essence of the story. <coughs> so even if you drive yourself, you will remain uh, coexistent. <laughs> yeah, in fact, that's the point. <laughs> because it is embedded in coexistence, right? Any deflection from this coexistence, either in the form of thinking, in the form of feeling, or in the behavior, form of behavior, right, gives you this indication of unhappiness. <coughs> so you have no option, right? You have the freedom only in the sense that you can feel or think otherwise 
But you don't have the freedom that by feeling otherwise, thinking otherwise, you can be happy. Only when you think and feel in the line of this coexistence that you are in a state of happiness. Whenever you feel or think in a, against this coexistence, you are in a state of unhappiness.